Hello guys, so in this video I will be teaching you how to work with Jack the Arrays. Basically they're quite similar to multidimensional arrays which you might find in real life situations. Multidimensional arrays resemble matrices and they basically are in the shape of a square. If let's say we had some kind of a multidimensional array, most likely it would have very precise and fixed size, which could be squarish or rectangulish, basically, because it will always have the same fixed amount of rows and columns as you specify in here. So if we specify that our array would have four rows and five columns, we basically would only work with this kind of structure where we could add different kinds of elements, basically typing in integers and our second line would look just the same way like this. All of our rows would have the same amount of values, but in our case we will be using uh, jagged arrays because they can have a different size. And in our specific case, we want to have an array which could hold the suits of our cards and also the cards themselves so we can create them we will also need to specify constants of the size of uh, our array so in our playing cards case we have 13 cards that are possible and we also want to have card suits yeah and this should be four uh, we will be using them for iterations and it will make it a little bit easier to go through our arrays when we'll need to access their indexes. Although we can access the length property of different uh, jagged array rows and columns. And uh, to declare a jagged array, you will need to type in the type of the jagged array. And you will need to type in how many different array uh, elements it will have. This basically means that it will have two separations. Uh, and we can just name it the cards equals to new string. And again, with uh, two square brackets following it. And to set the values, we can just assign that our first row will include arrays with card suits, which will look like this, and our second array, control D to duplicate, will have our playing cards. And we can just paste them in over here and delete this line. For us to be able to recognize when a card is already picked, we should fill up some kind of a dynamic array or a list uh, to identify which positions are already taken. So we can just instantiate a new list. And now we need to go really down to our hit card method, which is over here. As you can see, there are quite a few errors right now. The only parts that you will need to remove are these. So you can comment them out by pressing Ctrl K, Ctrl C, because we will take some of the expressions in here such as random generator next so we wouldn't need to type them in so we will need card suit index just like we had with card index and we will need to do the same thing that we did before but in our case we will use a while loop to go through every card 
we will be drawing cards until we actually get a card that isn't already taken basically in this video it's our goal and it won't be very long so we will be using jack the race for our current situation although in the next tutorial i expect to teach you object-oriented programming where we will be able to move our cards to a class uh, which will have all the required properties uh, to well for for us to use uh, in a list and when we're using a list it's a lot easier to work with objects when we can use such technologies as link you uh, which will allow us to navigate, modify, uh, get all the required information from the list. So in our case, let, let's work with Jack the Race right now. So we only need to check if our unavailable cards po position list already has a card with this position. This variable will be used uh, whoops this was supposed to be a string so basically we will be using this pretty much as a key uh, you could also imagine a dictionary where a key would be some specific position in a book or something like that so uh, right now all our keys will be unique because uh, we won't be getting the same cards twice each of them have to be different we will be just registering them and you will see a practical example of that random generator dot next playing card size this one uh, oh yeah the, this is it so just like this i think yeah seems like it's right then we also need to add this one and in here it's a little bit different because we only need to remove this part and now we will get from 13 if you hover over these variables you can actually see their current pre-built values which we have as defaults and then we can also create a card pause which will just concat Card suit index string. A string concat basically concatenates all of our values. So any any parameter, any argument we give to it will be turned into a single string with the combination of them all. So order matters here. It will basically append this string to this string to this string so in our case we just wanted to repeat the same thing that we did over here well a little bit different uh, because we won't need to specify our suit twice but in our case we can just do this we will register it here basically we need to uh, call our unavailable cards positions and we want to add this card current uh, card position as something that is already allocated in our case we just make a concatenation of let's say ace of hearts and it will add a new string to unavailable card positions which will be kept until we finish the round and in this case when we hit the second time we will go to the same while loop and it will contain one of the cards already and if we actually do get hearts of face we know that it will do another while loop because this while loop will repeat itself until we get a different card all right so we've done this part and then we only need to create some modified uh, expression for the printing 
the part so what we will need to do is well you can guess but it's quite simple just concatenate all the required fields that we had over here so in our case we want a card suit to be concatenated with our playing card and then concatenate it with the same suit. I will show you how to access an actual jagged array so you would be able to do it by yourself the next time you actually see them in real life situations uh, or you will be able to apply it even to multi-dimensional arrays. I can for surely tell you that uh, jagged arrays are a little bit more complex than multi-dimensional arrays. Just imagine that the first number that we type in the first square bracket is the line basically which array we want to access if we say that this is zero we will be accessing only this line and if let's say we type in two since we count from zero we will go 0, 1, 2 and we will get crosses in this case. If let's say we type in 0, we will get hearts. If we change the first square bracket, we will go into the cards array basically and we will access an ace. So uh, in our case we don't need to well specify anything over there but if let's say you wanted to create a text from that jagged array you can quite easily do that what you will need to do is basically go to deck cards type in which array you want to access in our case we know that we want the suits and that we want to get card suit index like this so basically it will go up to four and it will access one of the possible card suits that we have uh we actually don't even probably need this part because it will automatically do that then we can do the same over here and we can do the same over here just that in this line we want to access our cards uh, basically the playing cards and then we want to get playing card index in this place because it will go up to 13 and then the last thing that we actually need to do is i'll take the playing card and we can pretty much change this whole line it will give us the whole stylized text and if you want you can just remove this part to make it a bit more clear and we can test it out there's not much homework that i can give you with this uh, as you can see my last statistics are still here we do get the correct flow we get an eight the dealer gets an ace with 11 we can hit again and we get 18 we press now and the dealer actually won so yeah and everything resets as planned so yeah that that's pretty much it for jack the race like i've mentioned in the next tutorial it should be a bit more interesting because we will be able to refactor our code and make it a lot more clean um because right now it's messy in terms of code lines that we have it's over 500 lines of code and i would like to have some helper class which would print out all of these texts and keep something that would be basically taking care of uh, different ki kinds of responsibilities between different classes uh, and I'll try to think of ways how I could teach you inheritance, uh, polymorphism and a lot more concepts regarding OOP. And later on in the tutorial, I'll show you how we can use this whole code and just move it to Unity and make a game inside of Unity with graphical 
interface with all the cards i will draw the deck for you to be able to use on your own games basically the assets of the cards and uh, you will be able to finally touch uh, some parts of uh, an actual game engine so for now good luck have fun and have a wonderful developer journey